Uh, I'm also the uh, presbyter of all the Assembly of God churches in the Bronx, Manhattan, and the Little Westchester County. And the Assemblies of God has always been very pro-life, very involved in pro-life. But I became involved in pro-life in the 1980s. Uh, I'm from the Buffalo area. I was a pastor up there for a while. And in the 1980s, somebody showed me the video, The Silent Scream. And that changed my life. When I saw that baby scream in the womb, I was changed from that point on. I didn't realize until I saw that. And from that point on, I got involved in Operation Rescue and all, all the things with Rob and Paul Shank and so up, up in Buffalo. They came to the Bronx in 1990. And I began to talk about pro-life. But no one would listen. I, I felt like I was alone. That's why I'm also encouraged today. I felt like I was alone in 1990, talking about life. No, no, no politicians wanted to talk about it. Nobody on the radio wanted to talk about it. But, but I still, and, and even in the congregation, they didn't want to hear me. And it's been a slow process of teaching people what the Bible says, what the Word says. Like someone said earlier, when you know the truth, the truth sets you free. Uh, you know, there are a couple of incidents in the Word that are very powerful. And you probably know them, but let me just mention them. One is when Mary was pregnant with Jesus, and she walked into the presence of Elizabeth, who was also pregnant with John the Baptist. The Bible says John the Baptist leaped in her womb and was filled with the Holy Spirit. That child was a human being. Yes. That, would, that a human life begins at conception, and Amen. that is a real solid demonstration of that fact. That before that child was born, he could sense the presence of God. Amen. Very, very powerful point. Because everybody knows about Jesus. Everybody knows about Mary. Mm -hmm. And you can win some points with that one. Also, you know, sometimes the politicians will say, well, we want to save the life of the mother. And they put all their focus on trying to save the life of the mother and to the exclusion of the baby. To kill the baby, to save the life of the mother. But there's a very powerful incident in the Word where the opposite happened. And that was where Rachel was pregnant with Benjamin. And she gave birth to Benjamin. And as she gave birth to Benjamin, she died. And to God... It was more important for that child to come forth. Not that he uh, looked down at the woman at all, but the woman, but Rachel served her calling. She did what she was called to do. But now a new life, Benjamin, was coming into the world. And he would be the 12th leader of the tribes of Israel, mm -hmm. the son of the right hand. And the Bible says later on in the book of Romans that Paul. The Apostle Paul was a Benjamite. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul was a descendant of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Which shows that had Benjamin been killed to save the mother, there wouldn't have been an Apostle Paul. Amen. The, Bible, the Bible has really shows us what the truth is. Mm -hmm. the truth is in the Word. Yeah. We should know the truth. The truth shall set us free. Yeah. And, and as I've been teaching for 20 years in the Bronx now, trying to teach pro-life, nobody wanted to listen, especially from the minority communities. But finally, when the statistics came out recently about the devastation in the minority communities, finally, we're starting to see some people waking up. We're starting to see some, some unity, and we're starting to see some people come together support life. So let's, re let's really get involved in this reality. Let's finally show up uh, in, in large numbers and get in support life. Amen? Amen. God bless you.